Hi, this is Professor Fernandez. This is the second video in lesson five. We're still talking here about existence of two-sided limits um, and evaluation of two-sided limits in general. And we're going to do an example 2.6 here from Calculus Simplified. So this example says, determine the x values at which this limit does not exist and explain why. And then we're to use this figure. OK, so first thing to point out is that this is a two-sided limit. And again, we can tell that because there is no superscript on the C. This would be a left-hand limit. This would be a right-hand limit. But we are just given this. So that's the notation for a two-sided limit. Um, you might want to review if you're a little sketchy on the uh, details of how you calculate two-sided limits. So video 5.1 includes a lot of those details. And there's a three-part check. There are three criteria for the existence of a two-sided limit. So I'm going to use those three criteria here. And again, you can hop over to that video to see what those three criteria are and see me talk about that in detail. OK, so we want to determine the x values at which the limit does not exist. OK, so some of those criteria, the three criteria for a two-sided limit to exist, have to do with the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit existing. That's two of the three criteria. The third criterion is that the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit have to be equal right? once you know they exist. So we're scanning here this function, looking for places where either the left-hand limit doesn't exist, or the right-hand limit doesn't exist, or whether they both exist, but they're not equal, or whether they, they're, they're both equal, but um, uh, equal to something that's not a number, right? Which is a different, a very special form of not exist. So we're scanning here, right? And I'm just going to go from left to right. I'm going to ignore the endpoints for the moment, because that's a slightly trickier uh, investigation. We'll do that at the end. So I am going to go back and look at the first point. So if we're, if we're going along the function here, this is the first part where you see, you know, I might run into some trouble because the function's going along here and then it kind of jumps down to here and then jumps back over here and keeps going. So let's investigate what's going on over here at x equals negative one. We actually did this in the previous video. Um, but we'll just speed it up here. So what I do is I do my ribbon analysis. And I can see that from the left-hand side, I'm trending this way in the y values. From the right-hand side, I'm trending this way. This is not the same. So the general limit doesn't exist. Okay. So I can say here that I'm going to point out here, keep a little log. At x equals negative 1, the general limit does not exist, even though the one-sided limits do. Right? As I approach neg uh, negative 1 from the left, the y values get closer to 2. As I approach negative 1 from the right, the y values get close to negative 1. So those one-sided limits do exist. They're just not equal. So the general limit up here does not exist. Great. So I'm going to keep scanning the function. Right. Everything over here looks fine. Everything looks good here. If I were to pick any points, you know, maybe like this one, and zoom in and do my ribbon analysis, I would say, oh, uh, at this point, you know, if I approach from the left, I approach from the right, I get to the same y value, whatever this is, you know, maybe 0.5 or something. OK, so the limit exists, the two-sided limit exists over here. This might be 0.5. Um, so every point on the portion of the graph that looks like, you know, the curvier portion of the graph um, is going to be a point at which the limit exists. So the next real place you might wonder perhaps is over here. We have a kink in the graph. But still, if we do our ribbon analysis here, we will see that, again, the function's y values are still um, approaching the same y value from each side. And uh, that y value is a number. It's, x, it's y equals 1. So at x equals 1, the limit, two-sided limit, does again exist. So we're fine there. OK, now we get to x equals 2. So let's do our ribbon analysis here. So what happens? Well, the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit are both going in the same direction. Great. So you might think the two-sided limit exists. Um, however, remember that, you know, what does it mean for a limit to exist? It means that the y values approach some number as x approaches whatever the c value is, which is 2 in this case. Right? Both from the left. And from the right, the y value is approaching infinity. right? And that is not a number. So the left and right limits do not exist, even though 
we have all the information we need about in which direction, what the trend is for the y values. The left and right limits still do not exist. They are not equal to some numbers. So the two-sided limit, therefore, does not exist either. So we have found another point, right? So x equals 2 is another x value where the limits do not, the limit does not exist. Okay. So let's keep scanning the rest of the function. Anything else? Um, here's the next interesting part of the function that you might want to examine. Um, x equals 3. This is, again, another x value we examined in the previous video. Um, but you can see here that as x approaches 3 from the left, I tend to y equals 1. As x approaches 3 from the right, I also tend to y equals 1. So the left and the right limits exist. And they're the same. They're equal to the same number. So the two-sided limit exists. So that's uh, OK there. Um, and that's it, right? There's nothing else here. These are all the portions of the graph that I had mentioned. Uh, we did the little analysis before to convince ourselves that the limit, two-sided limit, exists at all those points. OK, so now I'm going to draw a little dotted line here and talk about the endpoints. OK. And those are two places where the limit also does not, the two-sided limit, to be more precise, does not exist. How come? Why do I say that? Well, look at the process we've been using to investigate this question, right? First, we go to the x value, and then we draw our little ribbon. And we investigate the uh, behavior of the function as we approach from the left and the right. OK, so let's look at negative 2. If we approach from the right, OK, we're going this way. The y value is 10 to 1. Great, we can answer that. But how about as we approach from the left? <laughs> I don't know because there's no graph here for us to figure out that answer. Okay, so the, the graph could could do all sorts of things. Maybe it it goes this way, or maybe it goes that way, or you know maybe it does this. I don't know, but I really just don't know. So I cannot even answer the question of what the two-sided limit is at x equals negative two. So that's why I'm going to put it here as a does not exist. It's a special type of does not exist, OK? It's different from what happened at these two. The first one at negative 1, the limit didn't exist here because, well, after we looked from the left and from the right, and we could look because we had the graph on both sides, we determined that they were trending in different directions. Um, at x equals 2, the limit didn't exist because we were shooting off to infinity. But again, in both of these cases, this one and this one, we had enough of a graph to be able to make those determinations. Okay, Not so for x equals negative 2. Um, the same thing is going to happen at 4. So let me just remove this clutter and show you that here. So if I look at 4, this is another endpoint. All right. Um, now it's the opposite. So now from the left, I know what's happening to the y values. They are tending to y equals 2. But I don't have information about what's happening as x approaches 4 from the right. I just don't have a graph. So same issue there, right? x equals 4 uh, is a point where this two-sided limit does not exist because I just don't have enough information. Great. So this video has hopefully shown you um, some of the ways in which limits might fail to exist. Quick little review, right? You might have the y values tending to different numbers, actual numbers from the left and from the right. You might have the y values tending in the same direction, however, to infinity. Infinity is not a number, so limits don't exist. Or you might be at an endpoint, right, where you just don't have the other half of the graph that you need to evaluate the two-sided limit.